Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Tilly here. If you're new here, hi there, welcome to my channel. Today I am super excited because we are starting a brand new series here on my channel called Picture This. I did get help from my family and social media for coming up with that. But every Friday, I am going to give you guys a video designated to anything and everything revolving around photography. Now, because this is the first episode in this series, I am not only going to give you a little bit of background on how I started photography, but I'm also going to be doing this photography tag from the YouTuber A Thousand Words. Now, she made this. If I can figure out a way to like tag her in this, I totally will. But I found this on her page because I was like, what's the best way to start this series? And this seemed like it would be it. So without further ado, let's just hop right on into the video. Beginning with how I started photography, it's actually kind of crazy because almost all of my life since I got my first tablet I have always loved to take photos whether it was of my dog or something I was doing of me you know selfies when we first got our first devices and all of that jazz even on a desktop computer I've always loved it I've been fascinated with it but throughout high school it really started to kind of kick in for me a little bit because for organizations and especially during football season, I would take photos on my phone and I would put them up on my personal Instagram. I would send it to certain teachers, my dance instructor, just everyone so that they could see, you know, hey, this is a great shot for the team or hey, this is a great shot for organization. Like, do you want to use it in something? So after high school, of course, then comes college. This was such a life changer for me. It was such a great experience because at my community college, there is both a photography one and two. Photography one is film photography. And I was so scared. When I tell you guys, I was scared. I, I was just terrified. <laughs> and the reason I was terrified was because I didn't realize, like it, it, it didn't click in my head like that film photography was, you know, like, darkroom photography it, it didn't click in my head so when I found out that it was film photography I was like what are, are, you, are you kidding I um, I'm not going to lie to you guys I almost contemplated dropping the class but I'm so glad that I didn't I was gonna drop out out of fear but I didn't I faced it there were a few mistakes here and there you know like almost I don't know opening my light sensitive paper but it was so cool to be able to shoot a roll of film of course on a film camera this is actually my first actual camera and it's a pentax k1000 coincidentally this was also my professor's first camera so it was really cool to be able to even take pictures on the camera that she started out with i loved it very much and just shooting on a roll of film and then not being able to see what you got until you process the roll of film then you can start printing after you make your negatives and it's so crazy because you can't see what you're actually doing but then when you step out of the dark room and you look at it it's just amazing it's a great feeling when you see what you've created i was so excited the first print i made i was like holy crap did that just happen it just like magically appeared on the paper it was so cool so after a very fun and semester a very fun semester full of hard work and always being in the dark room in my spare time I made some great friends one in particularly like we were in the dark room the most out of anybody and it, it was just a blast I loved it and like I think there was one day that I was late and my professor was like where's Keely <laughs> And I was in there that much, and it was just so fun. And I, w I wish campus wasn't closed, man, because I was I was totally gonna go in the like dark room and print stuff out this semester, but it didn't happen. So, anyways, we fast tracked through all of last semester. This all started for me last fall. That that's when it started, and then this semester, the same professor. Yay! She is so freaking awesome. But the same professor did digital photography, which is photography too. And that is when I get to use this little baby. 
I got my DSLR camera, I want to say it was, it was either last summer or right before school started, and I love my camera. It was such a learning curve though, going from film photography to digital, I was like, wait, there's stuff missing on this lens, because if you don't know, on film photography, when you're doing your lens, you control your, um, your aperture and everything on the lens, and your timer for your shutter speed is up here. But on digital, it's all inside of it. It's just inside the camera. And I was so confused at first. But my favorite part about digital photography is the editing. I love shooting the photos, but then when I get to edit it and really create a composition, it's really fun to do. And I've definitely been experimenting with that, especially with my photography final. I will put up a couple of my photos up here. I did a graduation photo shoot for one of my sister's friends. So, you know, that was really fun to do, and I was actually really happy with how the photos came out with. I will also put a couple photos up on the screen, and it is such a rewarding hobby. And as soon as I fell in love with it, I was like, all right, gotta, gotta get everything, gotta get everything. And, you know, I have a whole bunch of stuff, but you guys are gonna see that in next week's video, because next week I'm showing you guys what is in my camera bag. So, now that you guys have got a little bad story, it is time to do this photographer tag. So the first question is, are you a hobby photographer or a professional who gets paid for photography? I did tell you guys that I got one photo shoot that I was paid for. Now, that wasn't exactly professional. That was merely a courtesy to a family member's friend. So I would not consider myself a professional by any means. Definitely a hobby slash amateur photographer. I just love photographing things in so many different ways. I don't have a specific style. I just know that I really like beautiful photographs. How long have you been into photography? Oof. Okay. With actual camera cameras since... August of 2019, but overall, I would say at least since 2012 or before that, I want to say. I didn't really start taking it more seriously until high school and college, though. What camera did you start out with? I did tell you guys that my very first so-called camera was a desktop camera, but then it went to a tablet, then a cell phone. Then my Pentax K1000, so that's pretty much where it goes from the so-called first camera to my actual first camera. What camera do you have now? The camera I showed you guys is a Nikon D3200 in red with a lens 18 to 55 millimeter that's on it almost all the time. How did you learn photography? I mainly learned photography from my professor in college for two semesters. Where do you find inspiration? Okay, so. For inspiration, I actually have quite a few sources, but my main ones are a few specific people on Instagram. They're also on YouTube. So I know it's like a uh, Callup on Instagram. I think he has an Instagram, I mean a YouTube channel. Uh, Hayden Peterson, mm, I think it's Obstacle Wonder, and Pinterest. Also, um, Jessica, Jessica Kobesi? I don't know how to say her last name. Oh my gosh, I don't know how to say her last name. I will link all of them down in the description box below. They are all absolutely phenomenal, fantastic photographers, and so is my professor. I am actually going to link her website down in the description box below. Um, I know that she does have a professional Instagram, but I don't feel comfortable putting my professor's Instagram in my description box but I will definitely put her photography website in the description box. What is your favorite lens? Oh my goodness. Okay. Technically, I can't choose one, but I technically have, it's almost like two. Well, it is two. So first I have my Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter lens, which is my telephoto lens. It does have a macro setting, but it's not really a macro setting. However, that is one of them. And the second one is actually my 18 to 55 millimeter with my macro extension tubes. If you guys want to see my photography, I do have a photography Instagram, which I will also link down in the description box below. I have a lot of things going on. And also, since I'm talking about that, 
since we are talking about my photography online, I am selling my photos on finartamerica.com on multiple different platforms, whether that's t-shirts, phone cases, duvet covers, face masks, perfect to be rocking for COVID-19, you guys, and everything like that. So that will also be linked in the description box below. So if you guys want to go check that out, I would greatly appreciate it and it would totally make my day. And if you like anything or even any photos, you guys can just comment on my photos. How many lenses do you own? Oh boy. Ooh, okay, I think it's 18, my 18 to 55, my... I have a smaller lens. I don't remember what the millimeters is on it. And then I have my Tamron 70 to 300. So I have three lenses. Um, they are both, I mean, they are all three absolute phenomenal. What is your favorite piece of equipment that isn't a lens or a camera? Okay. So I have, if I had to choose one, I really think that it would be my prism. That is my favorite piece of equipment. Um, that's like an accessory. Now, if we're talking technical, my tripod. What is your most expensive piece of photography gear besides your camera body? That is the easiest question out of this entire thing. That would be my Tamron 70 to 300 millimeter lens. What is your least expensive piece of photography gear? Oh gosh. Okay. I know that it's my smallest lens. I don't remember how much I paid for it. I think it was like... 30 maybe I got it I got it from a, a pawn shop I will talk more about pawn shops and camera equipment at the end of the video so stay tuned for that what is your favorite thing to take pictures of if I have a cooperating model um people uh people but what I really really like taking photos of is scenery and I've noticed that I love to do, especially golden hour photography, sunsets, anything that has to do with water or the way that certain tree looks, even macro shots of nature and little buds and stuff like that. What area do you struggle the most with? I would say portrait photography just because like I can do it a little better on myself than other people. But sometimes it's really hard for me to tell a model what I want them to do. I don't have poses memorized for people. So, you know, if there's like an object or something, I might get some, some ideas flowing. But if it's just like me, a model, and a field, I have no clue what to do. So I'm a little inexperienced when it comes to that. So that is what I struggle with the most. Do you shoot with natural light or artificial light? I have nothing to take. Um photos with artificial light with like I don't have a lighting setup everything that I do is natural lighting and I think the only times that I've ever used artificial light was if I took a picture to test my camera inside of uh, a college campus that's it everything has always been natural lighting I feel like the natural lighting just gives a more beautiful touch to my photographs which camera bag do you have and do you like it I gotta look real quick and I'll be right back for my film camera, I have a small case logic back, not backpack, a small carry-on bag. For my digital photography equipment and my camera, I am using the USA Gear backpack off of Amazon. I will have that link down in the description box below. I actually got this for my birthday from my grandparents. So that was really fun because I figured out that I just had too much stuff for my small case logic bag. So I needed to get something else. <laughs> so yeah. That is my bag. I absolutely love it. The compartments. It has just enough space to be for like almost any photo shoot or any photo opportunity. Which tripod do you have and do you like it? I have the Amazon Basics tripod. Uh, it is a lightweight tripod. However, I have not had any issues with it and it's actually really stable. And it also has like those little balance meters to make sure, you know, you're completely straight and balanced out. I love it. Uh, I know eventually in a photography career that I'm going to have to upgrade it, something a little bit more reliable, but considering that mainly my photography right now is on my own property, uh, I don't need an expensive tripod right now. This is a long one. I'm going to read it off the screen. <laughs> what do you wish you knew or what still do you wish you had when it comes to photography? 
Wow, I'm about to have a really unique answer. I wish that I knew how people got those phenomenal drone shots. If you watch other YouTubers or if you watch travelers' Instagrams or YouTube channels or anything, even the videography that they do with their drones, it is stunning, mesmerizing, absolutely beautiful. I'm like, oh my gosh, you make me like not want to live in the States, you know? It's awesome. If I could learn how to do that, I would be set for life. Like, I would just be set. What is the next piece of photography gear you plan to purchase? Well, that I plan to purchase next, fractals. Those um, fractal prisms for your photos, like to make crazy effects on your camera. But, but, I do have photo props coming on the way. Uh, technically gear, props, whatever you want to call it from the Zoom Ball, and you guys are gonna be getting a whole video dedicated to it. Like I ordered all three sizes and the Zoom Ball stand so I could do a full review for you guys. And I already have some opinions, but I got a deal, so it's okay. <laughs> Share something that you learned that changed the way you take or edit your photos. Wow, okay, so this is major, and I know that a lot of people are probably gonna be like, why would you do that to the photos? But I learned from especially taking pictures of my family members that they felt really insecure about their skin. Now, no, I did not go through and Facetune and Photoshop and all that jazz. Literally, all I did was give them a natural glow in Lightroom. And that changed the way that I edited my photos immensely because I don't feel that it's right to take a photo and you know, if I were to use it for personal use, but the model doesn't feel confident, the model doesn't like it, that's not right, that's not how it's supposed to be. So I will always edit it and I will double check with the model, how do you feel when you look at this? And I've had people tell me like, I'm beautiful. And I'm like, well, you are beautiful. You're a beautiful person. You know, photos, I feel like photographs are meant to empower the models and make them feel beautiful and love themselves and everything of the sorts to make them feel more positive about their modeling jobs, their life, their appearance, everything. If you lost all of your photography gear, what are the first three things besides your camera body that you would replace? Ooh. Besides the camera body? Hmm. Well, obviously, a lens, a tripod, um, and one of the cleaning rockets to clean your lens or a microfiber cloth. Those would be the things because those are kind of the essentials. Just a quick little bit about buying your photography gear or your camera from a pawn shop. I bought both of my cameras from so-called pawn shops. My Pentax T1000, this little beauty right here, I got from an antique store. I actually found it on Facebook Marketplace with my mom. And it was crazy because I got the camera, my last tripod, and an external flash for just over a hundred, I think it was. And it was such a good deal. I was so thankful to have found this. And the camera works great. The only thing is, is that when you put film in here, you shouldn't be able to hear this. It shouldn't open up like that. But all I had to do was put some black taper on the outside and it was good to go. Um, the tripod did last for a while and the flash, it works great. So that was a great investment. And then for the pawn shop, for my Nikon D3200, it, for, I think we paid 200, just over 200 for my camera. Now that came with the body and the lens. And I think that was it. We had to buy a, no, no, it came with the battery and it came with, what SD card is in here? I don't even know. We're going to check this out. And it came with a 32 gig SD card. Now, I did have to go buy a charger and I had to buy like the camera bag and things like that, but everything that's right here in my hand was for just over or just under 200. And I also bought my smallest lens from the pawn shop as well. And it was great. 
So if you know what you're looking for and you can test, you can test things out. So like if you bring your camera to a pawn shop and you're like, um, can I, can I test this lens? Uh, can I test this? Can I see if this works on my camera? You can even test tripods. It's actually really recommended to test out your tripod to see if it'll work for your camera. Pawn shops are really good to shop at when you're first starting out. All you have to do is just see if you can double check things or make sure you know what you're looking for. I would definitely say that you need to know your thread size for your camera and for your lenses because if you don't know your thread size, you're not going to know what kind of lens to get and it may not fit your camera. It may be too big, it may be too small and you don't want to make that mistake. I didn't know anything about that until I started looking for my Tamron lens but then I found it and it was like boom right there in front of you. That is my photography journey, how it started, where I am now, and that's also the photography tag that honestly went pretty well in my opinion. And I'm going to leave a link down to the video below where I found it for you guys and also along with the questions. This description box is going to be full of awesome resources and things for you guys to check out. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If we can, let's try to get this video up to 60 lights and we will see if we can reach that goal. I love you guys so much and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!